Israeli forces, meanwhile, launching another raid on the Gaza Strip's largest hospital, saying Hamas militants had regrouped there and fired on them from inside the Shifa hospital compound. Well, joining us live this morning to further break down this conflict of the Israel-Hamas war is senior lecturer in criminal justice and homeland security at the University of New Haven, Mr. Ken Gray. Mr. Ken, good morning to you. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning, Janae. Good to be with you again. So a lot of information I just shared, we can start with that humanitarian crisis that looms. Uh, many people saying that the aid being received is too small and too scarce. And we've actually seen this in real time. I remember talking with you a few weeks ago and you could see the food coming down on small like parachutes, something you would see at a basketball game when they drop down the t-shirts for the fans. And it was really small. And um, what's being done, we are hearing that Hamas has um, allegedly been stealing the aid meant for those out in the Gaza area. Break that down for us, please. Sure. So uh, the, there's different routes in which uh, humanitarian aid is uh, being attempted to go be gotten into the Gaza Strip. Uh, you have the land routes uh, across the southern border from Egypt, and a few uh, routes have been opened up from Israel into uh, the Gaza Strip. Uh, most recently, the Israelis opened up a northern route uh, into the Gaza Strip uh, and only allowed in a, a small number of trucks to try that out. There was also the airdrops, as you mentioned, but those airdrops provided very, very few meals. And once the, the airdrops uh, uh, plat platforms got onto the ground, who knows where that food went? And so in addition to the problem of getting food into the Gaza Strip, you also have to distribute that food. We've also seen the, the, the sea route. Um, a ship came from uh, Cyprus and then had to be offloaded by uh, small boats going out to meet it. Uh, that only provided a very small number of uh, meals. Uh, there's 2.2 million people in the Gaza Strip and the, uh, the, the maritime route that brought in food only provided 500,000 meals. Uh, in other words, one meal per every four uh, uh, Palestinians there. So uh, this is really a crisis. Even in the best of times, the Gaza Strip has to rely upon external food being brought in. There are no farms here. It's not self-sustaining. And so uh, when you interrupt the supply of humanitarian aid, famine is going to result from that. The problem with famine is, is that after a certain point, even if you eat, you can't recover. And so this is a very serious situation. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said that 100% uh, of Gaza is, at, uh, is under a condition called food insecurity, meaning that, that, that there is likely going to be famine as a result of this. And so this is a very, very serious problem going on there. Um, inside Gaza, serious beyond that of the conflict between Hamas and Israel. So many great points you just raised. And when you spoke about the famine and how it's hard to recover, we should also mention that there was already a humanitarian crisis in this region before this war broke out. So how do you recover from something that you never really healed from in the first place? Yeah, as I said, there are no farms here. So the Gaza Strip relies upon humanitarian aid on a day-to-day -day subsistence uh, um, before October 7th. And so once October 7th happened and uh, IDF uh, started placing this uh, country uh, under pursuit of Hamas, uh, the food aid stopped and therefore uh, the, the Gazans were, have been experiencing this reduction in the availability of humanitarian aid ever since October 7th. But at, in best of times, it was just barely enough to survive with. And so uh, this, this really has put them into a crisis situation. Now you put this up against uh, the IDF's intention of pursuing Hamas into the southern part of the Gaza Strip, into Rafah, uh, the, Israel is under a lot of intense pressure. Uh, President Biden spoke with Netanyahu on Monday concerning the, the plans to enter into Rafah, told him he had deep concerns about this. However, if Netanyahu plans to get rid of uh, uh, Hamas, he has to enter uh, uh, Rafah. And so this, on top of the humanitarian aid problem, it has made uh, Gaza in a very, very difficult situation. 
ongoing with this has been the the uh, the, the uh, efforts towards affecting a ceasefire and to release the the 135 uh, hostages that are still being held and, and those talks are continuing forward but that's very difficult to do when the the country is starving and IDF is planning to pursue Hamas into Rafah so there are a lot of moving pieces in this and uh, the, the possibility of this all going wrong is very high. As we know from the very beginning, uh, Israeli officials and IDF forces have been adamant saying this fight is not against those innocent people in that region. It is against Hamas. And further breaking that down, I want to ask you, as Israeli forces just recently launched another raid, on that um, hospital out in the Gaza Strip. It just further shows how their fight continues to defeat Hamas. As we see these um, raids happen, I know that there's been a kind of conflict over you know, them raiding a hospital, but put it into perspective because Hamas doesn't care where they camp out. Tunnels, hospitals, schools, hiding bombs in uh, little kids' teddy bears. I mean, this is something that they have to do, correct? Absolutely. So Al Shifa Hospital was one of the central hospitals in the Gaza Strip. Uh, IDF had cleared that hospital. There was a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, press coverage of the fact that they had gone in there and had basically shut down the, the operations of Al Shifa Hospital during that period of time while they were trying to clear Hamas from there. But after they had cleared it and had moved on to uh, other areas in the Gaza City, um, uh, Hamas had returned there and was once again uh, using that as uh, their central base of operations for the northern part of uh, the Gaza Strip. And so Israel, the IDF, uh, uh, had a firefight with Hamas there yesterday. Uh, and so this... Uh, this is not over yet, uh, despite the fact that uh, the IDF is clearing from the north down to the south part of the Gaza Strip. Hamas has a presence still in some parts of the country that are, have supposedly been cleared from them. But nonetheless, the central concentration of Hamas that still exists, Hamas uh, um, was thought to have been about 25,000. They're now thought to be around 10,000. Those 10,000, a majority of them are believed to be in the southern part of the Gaza Strip, mingled among the the Palestinians that are not Hamas members down there. And consequently, IDF must be able to go into Rafah to clear that area to be able to uh, in, encounter Hamas to, to remove that threat. Uh, and that's very difficult when uh, you have um, civilian Palestinians in that area. They've got to move the Palestinian civilians out of that area and engage Hamas, and that's a very difficult process. Absolutely, and I can only imagine with so many moving parts and ever-developing parts. I want to ask you, Mr. Ken, what do we need to be keeping a close eye on? I know Fox News confirming that um, Israeli officials will be traveling to Washington to discuss their steps to defeat Hamas. What are you hearing on that end and also from your um, personal end and your expertise? So the thing that I uh, found very interesting during the week, last week was that Benny Gantz, uh, the um, a member of the War Cabinet uh, for Israel, uh, traveled to both uh, the UK and met with David Cameron, and then he traveled to the United States and met with uh, Senator Schumer, among others. And uh, with, the, with this travel here, uh, he is looked at as a potential uh, uh, political rival of Netanyahu uh, and may be the next person to lead that country as prime minister. Um, and so uh, that was interesting to see his influence there and the fact that he was uh, meeting with uh, with uh, foreign leaders. Um, that, that was a very interesting part. But I would keep an eye on the external uh, machinations going on in that Israel is being brought into a lot of pressure from the United States, from the UK, uh, and a number of other countries. And so whether they uh, will yield on their plan to enter Rafa or whether they will ignore that and insist on going into Rafa, that is something that will probably come to uh, a, a crux here at, during this week. And so that will be a key point, whether they enter Rafa. 
Absolutely. And while I have you, Mr. King, because I know you're very candid, which I definitely appreciate, and I know the viewers too, we know today is the uh, two state primaries in five uh, states here in the U.S. And one of those key topics is the Israel Hamas war. Uh, recently, former President Donald Trump uh, saying that if you don't vote for him, you're basically stating you hate Israel, you hate Israelis, you uh, don't want to uh, get a ceasefire, you want more people to die. Um, can you talk about how the strings are being pulled as it relates to this war and as it relates to the um, election that is in place? So everything is political. And so both, uh, both political parties are trying to gain points, trying to gain votes over this issue. Uh, and so it's not surprising that the Israeli conflict is being used as a political tool in the battle for who controls the country uh, after the next election. And so, uh, you know, uh, probably both, uh, you know, uh, President Biden said that he was fully in behind uh, Israel. And then now our support of Israel is starting to weaken a little bit over this matter of RAFA and over the matter of humanitarian aid. Uh, President uh, Trump, uh, full supporter of Israel, uh, much more uh, uh, in tune with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, but this is all politics and politics at the expense of uh, this ongoing conflict. You summed that up perfectly. Mr. Ken Gray, we always appreciate your expertise and dialogue. Is there anything else you'd like to add before I let you go? No, I think we about covered it. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Ken. You enjoy the rest of your day, okay? You too. Thank you so much.